Proverbs 27, we're going to look at verse 17. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for reminding us, Father, what it costs for us to be able to even come and worship tonight. Thank you, Lord, that uh, the reason we can call ourselves Christians is Christ became our Messiah, became our Redeemer, became our propitiation. He bled and died and suffered, went through the shame, the torture of the cross, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. God, we are thankful you came to where we was. You came to that ditch we was in. Lord, you made a way for us to be redeemed. God, we bless your holy name. God, we're thankful for these that have assembled in the house of God tonight. We're thankful, Lord, for the good testimonies and just the good sweet spirit that is here. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us the next few minutes. I pray you'd help those that are working with the children on the other side of the building, bless their feeble efforts, and God, use them to... Uh, expound the word of God and make it to where those children can understand it and may those children be blessed. I pray for the ones that, Lord, have not reached the age of accountability. May they store up what they're learning tonight in their heart that when they reach that point to where they can discern the difference between good and evil, I pray they trust Christ at a young age. Uh, God, those that are have reached the age of accountability and have not been saved, I pray that we'd see them get saved. I do pray for those that have been saved, that they'd grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Uh, Father, I pray for those that are working with the teens, you'd bless them as well. Uh, those teenagers face peer pressure and problems and things that we don't even grasp. Uh, uh, and Lord, I pray that you'd insulate them and help them, put a hedge about them. And God, I pray you'd bless our teens. And Father, these that are in the sanctuary, you know every heart, you know the need of every heart. Uh, Father, I pray that you would bless. I pray you'd speak. Uh, God, I pray your people would be caused to rejoice. I pray revival would break out in our midst. And God, you'd be glorified and magnified. Uh, and certainly, God, if there's anybody here tonight unsaved, I pray we'd see them saved. Uh, those that are saved, I pray you'd do great work in their hearts and lives. Uh, Lord, thank you for Brother Phil being back with us tonight. Pray you'd continue to touch him. Uh, Lord, I pray for Miss Marcy you'd help her and... I pray for Miss Debbie's friend, you'd help him. Uh, Father, I do pray for the those that are traveling, uh, and I pray you just bless them. Help us, Lord, now. Uh, get glory in your name. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, in this one verse, uh, I want you to notice the fact of this verse. Uh, it says, iron sharpeneth iron. Uh, can I say you cannot sharpen iron with plastic? You cannot sharpen iron with cardboard. Uh, you cannot sharpen iron with a lesser substance. Uh, it takes that hardened surface uh, to sharpen the other hardened surface. Uh, and can I say, uh, 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 if you're going to get a good edge uh, on something made of iron, you're going to have to use uh, uh, something of a hard structure in order to sharpen it. Uh, Iron sharpeneth iron. We see the fact of this verse. Uh, I want you to notice the friendship of this verse. Uh, it goes on to say, uh, So a man sharpeneth the countenance uh, of his friend. Uh, can I say, uh, a, a friend is able to talk to another friend in ways that a stranger can't. Uh, and can I say, if you got a good friend, uh, a true friend, uh, they're going to be honest with you. They're going to tell you when you're doing good, uh, and Brother Bob, they're going to tell you when you're acting like a knucklehead. Uh, uh, and a good friend uh, uh, is something that is finer than gold. Uh, I believe as Abraham Lincoln said, uh, if you lived your whole lifetime, uh, and when you died, if you had five true friends, you was a blessed man. Uh, a true friend is somebody that knows all your good traits, uh, all your bad traits, uh, and they still choose to be a friend. Uh, can I say thank God for friends? Uh, thank God for folks uh, you can count on and depend on, uh, confide in, uh, and folks that'll help you, uh, folks that won't go gossiping on you, but they'll be there and be a friend for you. So we see the fact of this verse. We see the friendship of this verse, but notice the fruit of this verse. It says this, iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. 
The fruit of this verse is because of the relationship between the friends, one can be honest and through counsel and through uh, spending time and through uh, 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 the relationship they have, uh, one can use hard statements in order to help the countenance of their friend. Uh, and we see the fruit of this verse. Through true friendships, our lives are enriched. Our countenance is better. Mm. Can I say sometimes... They, Brother Clint, don't have to talk ugly to us. Sometimes a friend can just say some things that are nice about us, and it helps our countenance. That's part of the fruit of this verse. Now, can I say that Jesus called us friends? Hmm? In John 15, he didn't call us servants or slaves, although that's where we deserve to be. We deserve to be a slave to the master and then be thrown off into hell. But he didn't cause us slaves, even though he redeemed us. And he could have said, I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to let you go to heaven, but you're going to be a slave here and a slave in heaven. But that's not what he called us. He called us friends. Can I say that through our friendship in Christ by being saved, uh, we receive the fruit of the Spirit? Ah, uh, what a blessing. Goodness, gentleness, meekness, you know, joy, and all those things that... Uh, uh, Galatians 5 lays out uh, we receive the fruit of the Spirit because of our friendship with Christ. Mm, but I'm interested and want to deal with the fact of this verse. Iron sharpeneth iron. And I'll preach for just a few minutes on sharpened Christians. Sharpened Christians. As a whetstone sharpens a blade or an axe head, God uses hardness to sharpen us. Now, we don't like hardness. I was thinking the other day, I, I try to think, I, I don't know how we've got to where we've got in this world. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that America was known as a Christian nation. But if you look around America today, you don't find much Christianity. You find a lot of Eastern religions. Hmm. I don't know how many times I hear namaste. Yoga, you know, that's part of Buddhism. That's false worship. Oh, if I get to preaching on yoga, I mean, everybody's going to start throwing stuff at me. Uh, you can go do this all you want to. Try and center yourself with the universe, whatever that means. I'm trying to get away from the universe. I'm trying to go upwards. Are you listening? Uh, I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Uh, we find that we're living in a society that has for 30 years preached a one or a oneness where there is one race, where there's one gender, where there's one identity. Miss Annette and I was in Boston, and we saw people walk around. We couldn't tell if they was male or female. And I wondered if they knew. True. Because people have bought into the philosophies of this world. How many commercials have you... Well, let me go back here and talk to Miss Lisa Jackson. Because she works at Procter & Gamble. Can you put in a, a note to the higher-ups that I'm tired of hearing about it being a green product? I really don't care about where it comes from. Plant-based products? Who cares? Plant-based cheeseburger? No such thing. A cheeseburger comes from a cow. Plant-based this, green-based that, and all that. When did America become so soft? You know why America's soft? Because our churches are soft. Our preachers are soft. Everything about Christianity has gotten soft, and it's filtered into society. We've let society affect us. We haven't affected society. Hmm? So God chooses hard things to sharpen us. We don't like hard things. We like softness. That's why you sleep on a pillow, not a stone. Say, I want to be like Jesus. Well, he had a stone for a pillow. Do you? He didn't have a place to lay his head, but you do. Do you really want to be like Jesus? 
You really want to be mocked and spit upon? Hmm. Boy, getting quiet in here tonight. I got to thinking about some things that sharpen us. Because a dull Christian won't help anybody. Hmm. Now, I'm not talking about a hateful Christian or a prideful Christian. God uses hardness to knock all that out of us. But a sharp Christian, one that can be a tool used by the Master to impact others. Can I say, first of all, God uses the Scriptures to sharpen Christians. Hebrews chapter number 4, verse number 12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, uh, piercing even to the dividing asunder, soul and spirit, uh, and the joints and marrow, uh, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Uh, there's no other book like the Word of God. Uh, the Word of God can change you. Uh, the Word of God can convict you. Uh, the Word of God can sharpen you. Uh, uh, God chooses the Word of God uh, uh, to transform us into His likeness. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. Uh, and Paul said, what is our preaching to be of? Made of preach the Word. Uh, uh, listen, the Word of God is what will impact uh, and help folks. Uh, 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 we live in a day and age uh, where folks don't want preaching. Uh, uh, they want to deal with that crowd, that Willowbrook crowd out of Chicago uh, where they do away with preaching uh, and they just do dramas. Uh, and then we've got a crowd, uh, uh, they want singing and entertainment. Uh, I love singing. Uh, but singing's like a salad. Uh, it'll leave you hungry. Uh, uh, singing just whips your appetite uh, for the preaching of the Word of God. Uh, hey, we need preaching. Uh, we need the Word of God uh, uh, to change us, to help us, to sharpen us, to get us to the center of God's will. Uh, we live in a day and age where folks don't want preaching. And helping out the funeral home like I have the last few years. You know what? Uh, we do a lot of uh, funerals still in churches, uh, and you'd be amazed at how many churches in this area don't have pulpits anymore. You know why they call them pulpits? Because the preaching is to pull people out of the pits of hell. Uh, they don't have pulpits anymore. You'd be amazed at how many Southern Baptist churches in our community uh, that have changed the stage and put in uh, lights uh, and drum kits uh, and screaming guitars and big amplifiers, uh, but no pulpits anymore. Screens, because they don't have songbooks anymore. Hmm? And folks that are our age sitting there uh, wondering what happened to their church. Hmm? Then it's all done. In the name of winning young people. That doesn't win young people. They don't have as many young people as we've got. You know why it doesn't win young people? There's nothing to it. God uses the Scriptures to sharpen us. Mm. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. God uses that word to have a keen edge in our lives so we don't live like the world. Can I say he uses the scriptures to sharpen us? Can I say this? He uses sermons to sharpen us. We need preaching. Preaching. And more preaching. Thank God for preaching. I love preaching. I love listening to preaching. I love doing the preaching. I love being around preaching. Uh, I love preachers. Uh, I love men of God that can open that book and expound the scriptures uh, and challenge me and change my life. Huh? Listen. Not all preachers are the same. Some preachers are soft-spoken. Some are loud. Some do a little hacking like me. It doesn't matter the style of the preaching. It's the content of what they're saying. Mm -mm. I know some folks that believe you can't preach with notes, but yet they'll sing out of a songbook. Mm -mm. You know, when somebody says they don't want somebody preaching out of notes, you know what they're really saying? They don't want anybody with any content. And preachers that don't preach with notes. Now, I know some people got photographic memories and they can preach without notes for weeks. But preachers that generally don't preach with notes, they usually will say the same thing week in and week out regardless of what text they read. And they don't preach the Word. They preach and they do a lot of hollering and spitting and slobbering and they do a lot of amen and hallelujah after they're preaching. 
They'll say something and amen. They'll say something. I, I don't need to amen myself. That's your job to amen me. Mm -mm. But can I say, God uses sermons to sharpen us. Preaching will soften your heart. Mm -mm. Yeah, can I say this? Preaching will stir your soul. And preaching will cause us to, to submit to the Spirit of God. Mm -mm. Thank God for preaching. I love preaching. I love going to meetings and hearing preaching. I love being a part of meetings where I get to do some preaching. But preaching will inspire you. Cause you to want to get out of the pew and do something for God. God uses the scriptures to sharpen us. He uses sermons to sharpen us. Can I say this? He uses storms to sharpen us. Nobody signs up for storms. Hmm. Boy, it was a good thunderstorm the other night. Miss Annette loves thunderstorms. It, it thunderstorms most of the night. We are watching my in-law's dog. He don't like thunderstorms. I hope it don't rain this week. We need to talk to Bella after church, see if we got any thunderstorms coming. That little girl always knows the weather. Uh, but listen, storms will sharpen. God knows when to send a storm in your life. I'm reminded as his disciples, he told them to get in the ship and go to the other side. We're talking there were seasoned seamen on that ship. And you, Paul and James and John knew what it was. They were fishermen by trade. They knew what them waters were like. Uh, and they were out there and they rowed and toiled uh, 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 throughout the night. Uh, and they weren't getting any closer to the other side. Uh, and they were afraid for their life. Uh, and Jesus came walking on the water. And the Bible said he would have passed them by. Uh, and Peter cried out. Uh, uh, many of them thought he was a ghost. Uh, and Peter said, if it's you, uh, uh, Lord, bid me to come. And Peter said, come. And Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, uh, and did well till he got to looking at the waves. Uh, uh, listen, uh, God sent that storm uh, uh, to show those men uh, uh, something in their lives. Uh, and God sends storms to show us things in our lives. Uh, show us we're not as far down the road as we thought we were. Uh, maybe we were dependent on our abilities and our intellect. Uh, maybe we were dependent on uh, 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 all that we can accomplish. Uh, and God sends a storm to show us uh, it's not in our power. Uh, it's not in our might. Uh, but it's by His Spirit, saith the Lord. Uh, he sends storms to sharpen us. Mm. I was talking with Miss Jan for church. She was quick to remind me we're not getting any younger. Uh, we don't bounce back from things as quick as we used to. And Brother Bob, I got a request for next Sunday night. I'd like to hear my song. It's going to look great going through the gate. If you haven't heard that song, it's worth coming next Sunday night to hear that song. But the truth of the matter is, the older we get, we still think we're young. And sometimes God's got to put some things in our lives to make us realize we're not what we used to be. And we've got to depend on God more. He uses storms. Sometimes He'll send something in your life that turns your world upside down because you've depended on you to get you to look toward Him. God uses storms to sharpen us. Can I say this? Sometimes He uses sickness. To sharpen us. It's amazing how God sometimes has to put us on our back to make us look up. Hmm. Talking, texting with a preacher today, and he's been going through it. I said, he's just been busy with the ministry and everything. I told him not to get weary and well doing. Sometimes we can be so busy in the ministry, we leave God out of it. God has to put us on our back sharpen us a little bit get us where we're supposed to be sometimes God's got to send a little sickness to get our egos in check mm. See, sometimes we get to thinking we're something when we're nothing God's got to send a little sickness to remind us isn't it amazing how a little virus named COVID stopped the world do you think COVID caught God by surprise and here's what amazes me is how many churches closed because of COVID. It should have caused a revival to break out. God sometimes sends sickness to sharpen us. I thought about this. Sometimes God sends separation to sharpen us. 
sometimes takes the death of a loved one. Boy, that song Brother James sang. Wasn't that a song? Boy, if we'd known that that day was coming, wouldn't we have spent more time with them? Mm, we sure would have. Huh? Sometimes the separation of death makes heaven that much sweeter. It's always a blessing to know when they leave behind the testimony where they're at. We know they cannot come to us, but we can go where they're at. Sometimes the separation and death will sharpen us. It'll make us appreciate life a little more. It'll make us cause us to give our flowers to folks while they're still alive. Hmm? Not only the separation of death, sometimes the separation of divorce will sharpen people. Hmm? I'm not an advocate for divorce, neither is the Lord. I'm glad the Lord's never going to divorce his bride. But I'm a product of divorce. My parents divorced when I was 13. I tell you, that's a horrible thing for children. When I was 13. It's a horrible thing. When Miss Annette and I decided we was going to get married. I told her to make sure because I'd been through one divorce. I wasn't going through another. Huh? She could never leave me because wherever she goes, I'm going. Unlike Brian Myers, I'm not going. You know, he, he won't leave Miss Jackie. He goes everywhere he, she goes, you know, because he don't want to kiss her goodbye. But I'm going wherever she goes just because I want to be around her. Huh? There's a difference. You're welcome, Brother Brian. Trying to help you, brother. All of a sudden, that video just kind of got messed up right there. huh? But sometimes I've seen a divorce. God work as a result of that divorce and sharpen somebody's life and change their life, and change their outlook. We got folks in here tonight that have been divorced, and they're a lot closer to God now than they were before the divorce. I've seen that. Sometimes God uses the separation of distance. Absent makes the heart grow fonder. They say. Sometimes when somebody's away, God will use that distance sharpen you make you a fit vessel he'll use separation I'm glad God can do whatever God wants to do and regardless of our decisions or our lives God can still do whatever he wants to do he's God I mean if he used a rooster to preach to Peter used a jackass to preach to Balaam God can do whatever he wants to do huh? I've heard some Baptist preachers limit God he's not allowed to do anything you know, if you don't wear a white shirt, God can't use you to preach. And if you don't have your hair cut every week, God can't use you. And if you don't wear wire ring, if you wear wire ring, God can't use you. God can't. God can't. Well, I read in the Bible where nothing's impossible. God, God do whatever God wants to do in spite of us. The Bible says He winks at our ignorance, my dear friends. He do whatever He's God. I'm just glad He lets me hang around. Are you listening? Then I thought about this. Iron sharpeneth iron. God uses hard things and hardness to sharpen us. Make us vessels that are meat for the master's use. Uh, listen, if I don't like looking around seeing a bunch of sissies, do you think Jesus does? That's why I look at things. I, I, I try to look at things and think, what is, what's the Lord thinking? If it disgusts me, what's it doing to him? He's holy. Uh, thought of something else God will use you making a stand to sharpen you now listen it's easy when you're around a bunch of folks that know you to make a stand but when God asks you to make a stand where it can affect what people say and how people act about you you might be a little reserved Listen, making a stand may, may, may not make you popular. It may even make you a martyr. But regardless, it, you will make an impact if you truly make a stand for God. I've told this story in years gone by, but I'm going to tell it again. I heard it in 1984. 
Ralph Sexton Jr., who pastors in Asheville, North Carolina, wasn't pastor, and then his dad, Ralph Sr., was pastor. But in Asheville, the homosexual movement was trying to come to Asheville. And by the way, there's an outlet mall in Asheville now, and I usually stop coming and going because they got a vineyard buying outlet. And we're Seth, he's back there with Youngwood, and his last birthday present came from there. Uh, and they got some shoe outlets, some of the shoes I like. And so I stopped there, and I want to tell you one thing about Asheville, North Carolina. It's run over with homosexuals now. You see them everywhere there. Exactly. Uh, I do not recommend going without a forty caliber on your hip, okay? Yeah, two of them even better. But Ralph Jr., that was starting to infiltrate there, and he wanted to make a stand. He called all the pastors in the area and said, we ought to have a parade and let this community know we're standing against this mess. All the pastors said, amen, Brother Ralph, you get the permit, we'll be there. He got the permit. They shut down Main Street on Ash in Asheville, North Carolina. That Saturday morning came when they was going to have the parade, and they was all going to march against uh, 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 this homosexual movement and uh, 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 Brother Ralph's there and uh, he's looking at his watch it's about 15 minutes till the parade stop and he's looking around and another preacher in, in sight the crowd is starting to gather they're thinking boy something's going to happen here and they're all gathering on the, on the sidewalks and waiting and maybe they're waiting for the fire trucks to come by and throw candy maybe they're waiting for something they, did, they just knew there was going to be a parade came time for the parade not one preacher showed up there's Brother Ralph. He's like, Lord, what, do you, what am I going to do? The Lord spoke to his heart and said, you're going to do what I told you to do. So Ralph went out, stepped on the double yellow line in the middle of Main Street, Asheville, North Carolina, and he headed to the other end of Main Street, and he preached all the way down there against homosexuality. People were laughing at him, making fun of him. Got to the other end, and he felt so dejected. Got to his car, felt like a total failure. In his car, the Holy Spirit came by where he was and said, you did exactly what I told you to do. In my eyes, you're ultimately successful if everybody on the sides of the street would have got saved because he did what he was supposed to do. Making a stand isn't always glorious, but it will sharpen you. Years ago, I read a, a book this illustration was in there. I've never forgotten it. Back in the old building, I preached along these lines. A man, true story, a man went walking down the street back when you know, there were storefront stores. I remember those days. And he happened to walk by a jeweler store. And he looked in, and right inside the windows, the jeweler, and he had grinding wheels there, and he had these ugly rocks so they looked like he just went out and picked them up off the pavement he thought what's he going to do with them rocks he said but I watched and he said he opened up his grinding wheel and he said it, it had two two round discs about the size of saucers and he took those ugly rocks and he, and he put them on that that machine and then he reached into another box and he grabbed a bunch of dust and he put on top of them ugly rocks and turned that machine on and that machine used them sanding disc and that dust began to work on them ugly rocks and what he did not know is those ugly rocks were diamonds in their natural state and the dust that he used was diamond dust see it takes diamond dust to polish diamonds diamonds are the hardest uh, uh, mineral that we have uh, and just like iron sharpeneth iron it took diamond dust to work on those ugly diamonds uh, he said in just a little while uh, those wheels began to polish up them stones and what used to look like rocks uh, now started putting off radiant beams of blue and uh, 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 sparkles uh, and he all of a sudden he, he seen him cut that diamond and what was uh, 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 just looked like something you find on the pavement uh, now is a priceless gem and jewel uh, and my dear friends uh, 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 your life may not look like much uh, and the world may 
not think much of you and they might think you're just like them uh, but when God begins uh, to reach into his bag uh, and begins to hard, uh, harden you uh, and sharpen you uh, and do a work in your life uh, you too will shine his radiant beams uh, you too will become something precious uh, and he said in Malachi 4 when he's coming back uh, he's going to make up his jewels uh, uh, friend let him do a work in your life uh, let him sharpen you up uh, let him send sickness uh, let him send storm clouds uh, let him make the scriptures a part of you uh, listen to the sermons uh, let God do something in your life uh, and friend when it's all said and done you'll be to the praise honor and glory of him uh, hey, and what he did on Calvary uh, it'll be worth it to him for what he's done in your life uh, let him sharpen you so he can present you something precious. It's been many a days I've wondered why he would save me. Why would he bleed and die for me? And friend, he did. And I don't want to be found like he found me. I want to be found something that he's done a work in that I no longer look like this world but I've been transformed into His likeness. And the only way that happens is He must sharpen us. Let Him sharpen you. Friend, whenever something comes in your life, He's allowed it. Embrace the opportunity to bring glory to Him. Because friend, that's the only way we can begin to even think about repaying what He did for us is by bringing glory and honor to Him. Are you going through something tonight? Might be God's just polishing you up to make you shine for His glory. Maybe you need to get in the altar tonight and say, God, whatever you're doing in my life, give me the grace to help me be what I need to be and you just be what you are and God, it'll be all right. <laughs> Maybe you need to come and thank Him because He's already done some work on you and He's already polished it on you and you, uh, folks are starting to take notice you ought to get in the altar and say thank you Lord I know it's all the work of you it's nothing I've done uh, 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 maybe he spoke to you in another capacity now, whatever God's doing in you let him have his way in your heart and in your life let's all stand tonight Brother Ray come get a song of invitation I don't know what he's doing I just know that God uses things and circumstances and events that we might impact somebody else's life. You're never going to impact anybody else while you're looking like them. But if they can see something in your life that they don't have, they'll aspire to it. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these that have already come. God, there's times that you do things we don't understand what's going on. But Lord, you never do anything by accident or by chance. God, you might just be wanting to sharpen us, put an edge on us, that we might make a difference in somebody else's life. Now, God, speak to somebody tonight. Maybe you need to send comfort to somebody. Maybe you need to send strength to somebody. Lord, maybe you need to send someone to go to somebody else. Be that friend to help somebody's countenance around here tonight. Lord, uh, maybe you're working in another manner. Whatever you're doing, God, just do it with grace and do it with mercy. Have your will and way now. Speak to hearts and certainly, God, if somebody's unsaved, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Get glory to your name, Father. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.